Hi all, Talia from Madeira USA here. We are here with Nancy Mini, our embroidery expert. In today's video, Nancy will be showing off Madeira's Bermelana number no. 12 embroidery thread. This will she will walk us through the steps of creating these lifelike designs destined to be your favorite artwork, gift, or even a throw pillow for the holidays. As always, we love the idea of you staying connected with us, so jump in and tell us about your experience with uh, Bermelana. Give us a thumbs up, let us know if you're watching, and comment with any questions that you have on today's products. So please, without further ado, Nancy, take it away. Thank you, Talia. So here we go. We're going to talk about Bermelana here. Bermelana is in thick thread, so your regular thread is 40 weight. This is the 12 weight. And if you compare it, this comb would normally hold 5,500 yards for, you know, rayon or polyester 40 weight. This is 1,100 yards on the same size comb. So imagine how much thicker that thread is. And, you know, I'm going to share the tips and tricks on how to get this product running and looking great. We've got some great designs from Embroidery Library that we're brushing out and a couple that we have here in-house as well. So this is just a tan. And I have some more threads over here that are it's just a small sampling of what we have. Um, you certainly have some really pretty pastels. You have your holiday colors, whether you like those red and green or this red and green, and certainly, you know, any color in between. But like I said, that's just a sampling. The color card is available for these threads. It's Bermelana and Bermelana Co. So the Bermelana is a wool blend thread. The Bermelana Co. is a cotton blend thread. And there are over 200 colors available. So that's certainly a lot of colors to choose from and imagine all the things that you can do. When I do think about brushing out, I automatically go to animals because it creates kind of a fur. But we have a really cute um, Santa Claus here. So we brushed out his hat and his beard. So we're going to show you that as well. Um, so a lot of choices here. So we have a comment from Sam. Um, I've used Bermelana a couple times to find to create interesting design effects. I find it a little challenging to thread through the needle. Do we have any tips to make this easier? Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Sam. Um, so yes, it's a thick thread. So speaking of it being so thick, with your 40 weight, you typically would use either a 65.9, a 70.10, or a 75.11 needle depending on what your preference is, but you have to go all the way up to a 116 size needle. So that's got a nice big eye to put this nice thick thread through. However, it is challenging because this is a spun thread. It makes it a little hairy. Um, H-A-I-R-Y. Um, so fuzzy. And um, that does make it challenging. So I've actually got a trick here I'm going to show um, how to make threading this thread into the needle quick and easy. Um, so I'll get to that in just a minute. And so things that we're working with today, we're talking about brushing it out. So if you look at this cat, um, he has a lot of fuzz going on there. Um, so we embroidered it with the Bermelana and then we brushed it really hard. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so because you're brushing this, I wouldn't suggest that you put this on a lightweight fabric. You need something kind of heavyweight. So you've got your denim, I've got a bunch of canvas uh, or duck cloth here, nicely tight, nice and tightly woven fabrics. And it's gonna withstand the pressure that you're putting on it while you brush it. So nice heavy canvas or denim is what you're gonna need there. We're gonna talk about the threading. Um, but with like all threads, it's important that I'm going to put that down so I'm not swinging it around. Um, like with all threads, tensioning is probably one of the number one things that you need to get your thread running well. And to find what your proper tension should be, we're going to look right at the bottom here. And this is the back side of a simple satin stitch. And if you have your tension set right, your thread's going to run perfect. And you see one third of the bobbin thread showing down the middle and then one third of the top thread wrapped around the edges there. If you've got too much bobbin thread showing on the back side, your top tension's too tight. That means it's pulling the thread up to the top and vice versa. If you don't see any bobbin thread, then that means your top tension is too loose and it's pulling all the thread down. So you need your, your satin stitches to look just like that. And when it comes to tensioning this, it's hard to give you an exact number um, and feel on how it goes. But if you think of the difference between rayon and poly, how it feels when you pull that through the machine, 
you want this thread to actually feel quite snug as you're pulling it. Um, snugger than polyester would. You want it to get to the point where it almost feels like it would break if you pulled it really hard, but, um, but it won't break as you're pulling it. So you just need it to be snug. You don't want it to be loose. Otherwise, you're gonna have this looking on it and you're gonna get constant thread breaks. So just do some testing up front and that will help this. Um, by the way, this little form here um, is available online under our frequently, um, under our services, I should say, um, for troubleshooting. So that's a really good thing to have next to your machine to help you set the tensioning, for sure. Another thing, you know, tensioning and setting it can be challenging. And this is probably one of the top threads that can create bird nesting. And they create the most beautiful bird nests because the thread's so fuzzy and hairy. Um, if you had a miniature bird, you can give that thread nest to them. Um, but nobody really likes thread nests. So if it does happen while you're trying to tension it or something goes awry with your machine um, and you do get a bird's nest, we have a bird nest removal kit. Um, and it comes with this really sharp blade so that you can slice right underneath your hoop and you can detach the hoop from the machine that the bird nest kind of um, creates and you, you can actually save a design once that happens. Little um, shepherd's hook here that helps you pull the thread out in your rotary area and there's actually a pair of vent tweezers as well so you can start grabbing those. Um, so this is a really great product to have on hand even if you're not working with wood vermilana, but if you do get bird nests from time to time, um, this can save a design or an expensive garment. Um, so certainly a great thing to have on hand. Um, lint rollers was necessary as you're brushing this. You're, you are kind of creating fuzz. Um, so the lint rollers help clean that up as you're working with those. Hand air is super important when you're working with um, Bermelana. Um, so if you have the tensioning going right, it's great, um, but you're also gonna build up all this fuzz within your rotary hook area where your bobbin goes. Um, so this just helps you clean out the rotary hook area, um, your needles and where things are um, just kind of building up with the fuzz. So you definitely wanna have some of that on hand. Also, one last thing here is the, our digital tension gauge. Put that on the white just so it sticks out a little more. Um, this is a fairly new product that we started carrying a little bit ago, and it's a digital tension gauge. And you know, the nice thing about digital is it's way more exact than if you were working with an analog device um, that has springs and things like that. So it has the place where you can put the bobbin case and it also, ha sorry, it also has these pulleys um, where you can check the top tension as well. So getting your numbers for your machine um, is important and having one of these on hand can be very, very helpful. So let's see. Um, consider, you know, this design here was digitized for Bermelana so that we could brush it out. And this is what it looks like, not brushed. And then over here, we brushed it out. So you can see it really gives a nice fuzzy look. I particularly like them both. Um, so you can decide whether you wanna brush it out or not. But you know, the feathers down there um, kind of blends in really nicely, I think. Um, that's a design that we had digitized for us. It really gives it, the design a lot of dimension, which it is- It does. In reality, um, we've brought these to trade shows and people walk up and they thought, you know, they're patting them because it feels like a real animal. Um, so we'd have to have our brushes that we're gonna brush it out. Um, you can actually use that on it to kind of make it look a little bit better. So kind of like your pet, you're gonna brush it out a little bit. Um, so people have a lot of fun with those when, it, um, when we're at the trade shows. We do sell this brush set here, at Madera USA as well. I'm gonna start cleaning up here a little bit because I'm gonna be showing you something here. Um, so embroiderylibrary.com has these designs that are specifically digitized for the 12 weight thread in addition to being digitized so that you can brush them out. Um, you have a bunny, you have a cute little guinea pig. The bunny's not brushed out. Um, 
that the guinea pig is. And be, actually, you know what? I do need to talk about his backing. Um, this is also important. So if you think about the fabrics that we're talking about here, our canvas, our denim, a nice crisp tearaway is what you want to use on that. Because once you turn it over, you're going to be able to tear it away nice and easily. And that material is going to be able to hold up the design all on its own. So a nice crisp, this is a one and a half, one, sorry, 1 1.8 ounce crisp tearaway. Um, so that's what you want to use there. Let's see. Santa Claus, he's awfully cute. I just made a little slip cover for him, but his beard and his um, pom pom and his hat are all brushed out. So he is kind of cute, or he's really cute, I should say. Um, notice I created an artwork up here that I hung up on the wall. Um, this was kind of a special fabric that I wanted to try it out on just because it looked a little um, kind of snake skinny looking. Let me actually bring that down. And um, he's got some texture on it. It's almost like he's on leather. I didn't want to brush him because I just felt he looked really nice that way. Um, so I do like to consider embroidered things artwork. Um, so you can hang them on the wall. And we've got them all around the building. So Santa Claus. Um, here I did brush him out. And he just looks so majestic with his hair all brushed up. Um, canvas bag. So similar to duck cloth or canvas, nice heavy duty material, held up really well. So the cat is what I'm gonna talk about today and I'm gonna kind of show you how I kind of, um, again, this is just a slip cover that I've made for a pillow and he's been brushed out so he's nice and fuzzy. And I'm kind of, I'm going to show you some brushing out. Talk about how I created it and got it to that point. So one thing I do, one thing you want to avoid when you are brushing it out is you want to keep the brush off the fabric as much as you can. But you also want to be able to brush those edges so that you can get the fuzziness. So what I decided to do was to make a template. And I did that with just a little bit of vellum paper. Notice how you can see the design right through that. So I just drew a line around it. I cut it out like this. And then I made a template on some cardstock. This vellum is not going to be able to protect the fabric, but the cardstock will. Um, so from here, I'm just going to cut this in half. And maybe I'll just do the top for today. And I'm going to cut out the inside of the cat. And you can be a little rough. You don't have to be exact on. You're just trying to protect the fabric from being brushed too much. Um, I did learn that the hard way. And, you know, one of the designs that I brushed out, I realized after the fact that I brushed the fabric. And it made a nice soft looking edge, kind of a halo all the way around it. Um, so not the worst thing in the world, um, but like with the black, I don't want to get that all fuzzy. So if you look, I just want to get the cat looking good. So like I said, I'm just going to do the top part of it for today. So I don't need that. What I need is the outside so that I can lay it on top and protect the fabric. And then I'm going to take, so the two brushes, one of them is harder. Not that you can see that, but that one's really soft, I should say, and this is the hard one. And I really like to just use the harder one um, because it really gets that fuzz kind of going quickly. Um, so when you think about your, or when you think about, don't let me forget the um, threading here. I'm gonna go back to that, Sam. Um, you're not gonna sit here and you're not gonna like brush them nice and easy. Um, you're going to get rigorous is what you're going to do. So you're going to really bear down as you're brushing. And for this guy, his stitches are kind of going this way. So I want to go against the grain when it comes to this. And notice I'm going over the top of that cardstock and I'm protecting my fabric. You could do that like this as well. Um, but you just have to be a little bit more careful. So because I want to get um, 
real tough with the, the brushing, I want to keep the fabric safe. So I'm going to do this for a little bit here. Let's see if we can get it to look fuzzy. And notice there's a lot of dust there. So it's creating fuzz, so you can just easily get rid of that with your roller. Um, but as I brush it up like this, are you able to see that? It's a little fuzzy. So I'm going to work on him a little bit more here. Maybe work on his cheek over here. If you, you, so we do carry these brushes here, but you might even have it in your house. These are those nice wire brushes that maybe you're using for suede boots or shoes that you want to clean the mud off of them. After they've dried, it's kind of the same brush. Or like I said, you don't even have to brush them. You can keep them the way they are. Um, so hopefully that was a good demonstration. This whole cat, other than his eyes, nose and ears are all Burmalana. So I would even get up on his ears and brush the edges to give them a little bit of fuzz. Um, you want to be careful of the rayon, like where the eyes are and things like that. Um, again, you don't want to be brushing those because you might start pulling them out. So you don't want to do that. Um, I've got underneath that, that tear away. And maybe you're asking, why do you keep it in the hoop? The, coop, the hoop itself kind of keeps the fabric taut, so it helps hold it while you're brushing it. You don't have to keep it in the hoop, but I find it works better to do that. So notice on the back, I've got that tear away. Actually, I floated a piece on the bottom. Um, so I've got a couple pieces here. I've got the one that I hooped. And then I floated an extra piece on here because he has a lot of stitches and a lot of it was that Burmalana thread with the long stitches. So I wanted that extra piece. I used a little bit of double sided tape to hold it. I don't really like to float backing. Um, so I did use the tape to kind of hold it in place. That way you know it's going to be underneath the whole cap. So look at that, it's completely gone, the backing. Um, so it's a nice presentation on the back side, and then back to here, and you got to be patient and you got to be vigilant. Maybe do it in segments of 10 minutes or whatnot, but it builds up your muscles um, <laughs> doing the brushing for sure. Uh, but it does take a lot of work and a lot of time to get it to look as fuzzy as that guy is over there. So one last thing I do want to talk about, thank you Sam for asking that question, is how to help thread the needle with this really thick thread. Um, this is a white piece of paper from my bobbin box. I keep it on hand because I always put it underneath the needle when I'm threading. Um, and it helps me, especially if you're working on dark fabrics, it helps you to see the needle a little bit easier. So I always have that on hand. And then what I do is I just use a metallic thread and I create my own needle threader. And the nice thing about it is you always have thread on hand so you can make another one because I do tend to throw it away by mistake when I'm trimming threads and things like that. Uh, but in order to show you what I do, I've just got a thicker piece of um, kind of like shoelace here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And this is a little, probably a little larger than I would normally do. Um, but what I do is I take the thread, fold it in half, and then I just tie a loop. Once I've tied the loop, I have these two strings here, and I really only want one. So I'm going to cut one right off. Then what I do is I use this to go through the, the needle, the eye of the needle. I drop the thread in, and then I pull it right through. So obviously I can't get that through it. So I'm going to show you. You take the and I use metallic because it's nice and... Um, I don't know what the word is. It's stiffer than your rayon or your polyester thread. So it kind of holds up well and um, you can use it over and over and it's easy to thread, especially through a uh, 116 needle because it has a nice big eye. So I'm doing the same thing I did with that shoestring. I'm making myself a loop, tying it, and 
I only want one string here. I don't want two because I only need to put one through the needle. So I've created that loop, these big loops. And if I were at the machine, I would take this. This is just holding my thread for today. Normally on a commercial machine, it would be up on top. I'm gonna, I actually have a 116 needle here because I want that nice big eye. Um, so this would be up in the machine. I would take my the end of my thread here. Notice, like if I was on black, I can't see it. So I put it on white, then all of a sudden I can see the hole. I've already got it through. I pull it just so the knot goes through the hole. If you, can you see this, Talia? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I take my Bermelana and I drop it in anywhere inside the loop. It's kind of a big loop. I would probably make a little bit smaller one, but it'll still work. And watch that thread go right through. Boom. So that's what I do to um, thread. I don't sit there and try and lick it a you know, hundred times. I don't trim it a hundred times um, just because that's so much easier. Um, so I do that. They do have um, needle threaders out there, very similar, you know, it's kind of where I got the idea was uh, they have really thin wire loops just like this that you can put through your needle, um, but they're so small that I'm sure that you're just going to lose them. I know I would. So this guy, I have my thread here. I'm just going to keep making them as I need them. And I try to get organized so I don't lose it. Um, so. I think that I've covered everything here when it comes to Bermelana. If you have any more questions, please do let me know and we will get back to you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nancy. Um, of course, all the products are you can find right online at MadeiraUSA.com or you can call in to 800-225-3001 and add it to your next order. Our customer sales and support team will be glad to assist you there. That's all the time we have for today. So if you have any questions, please comment here and we'll get them answered for you. Thank you so much for watching. And again, we are Madeira USA and we will see you next time.